All of our productions at GCTV are sponsored in part by Bay State Health, providing the care you and your family need when you need it close to home. Visit them online at baystatehealth.org. Greenfield Savings Bank. Visit them at 400 Main Street in Greenfield. Call them at 774-3191 or go online to greenfieldsavings.com. Greenfield Community College, providing access and excellence in higher education in the Pioneer Valley. Visit them at gcc.mass.edu. The Hammond Family. The Hammond Family are longtime supporters of Greenfield Community Television. New Fortune Chinese Restaurant on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. Visit them online at newfortuneMA.com. Call them at 772-0838 and check them out on Facebook. Real Cleaning Services. Cleaning Hampshire and Franklin County since 1972. We don't cut corners, we clean them. Check them out online at realclean.com. Call them at 413-422-1143. People's United Bank, located at 45 Federal Street in Greenfield. You can call them at 774-3713 or visit them online at peoples.com. The Solar Store of Greenfield, replacing fossil fuels and nuclear power one home at a time. Visit them at 23 Fisk Ave. Call them at 413-772-3122 or visit them online at solarstoreofgreenfield.com. Thank you to our sponsors for supporting all of GCTV's productions. I'm a survivor of the crack cocaine epidemic and we wanted to, or let me say, I wanted to um, change the stigma and let people know that people do recover and because uh, I've experienced a crack cocaine epidemic, um, what, what better place than to be on the national mall to let everybody know, this is what we're doing in Washington, D.C. We all have a little bit of both in, in all of us, and this walk unites both sides of me. And that's why I, I decided to come down here and speak, because it really speaks to me as a human being with my own struggle. Father God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day today, oh God. It was supposed to rain on Wednesday, but you stopped the rain. Father God, I just want to say thank you for your vision to get this walk done. People might not think it is a success, but God had already ordained it. Check the sun out. Look at the speakers. Let's praise his name because everybody else can sit up and say, I, I can praise this person. But how many of y'all can praise the name of Jesus? His name is Jesus. And I'm grateful that he chose me to let you all know that recovery is possible. My story is my mother was 55 years old. My father was 57 years old and they died a year apart but I'm here today after being depressed from drugs and addiction I'm standing here to let you all know recovery is possible first when it gets down to um, the re-entry uh, sometimes with the programs today it's like mm, let me right a wrong that was wrong and nobody talked about it. Because we're finding now that more uh, cases 
for the reentry were tried wrong. So we're doing some redemption type things. Transformation is going to be very important for us all to understand why or what are the root causes of to why a person do what they do. It doesn't matter what it is. What were the root causes, physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual? Some things weren't answered. So with the re-entry, you have a group of people, I'm talking about citizens, who are learning things differently. But at the same time, it's going to teach us how to right the wrongs that had happened. And it's just amazing, really, you know, if you think about the African American Museum, here we are. Right here, across the street from the African American Museum. But yet, it means so much to why recovery and having events like this is very important. DC has an initiative called Live Long DC, where they have an initiative to save lives from the opioid addiction. And we are doing that through education, through summits, through outreach, through our community partners as we have here today with Walk for Recovery, who's led by Rhonda Johnson. And these are grassroots businesses, persons who have recovered from addictions themselves to come out here because we have to reach one and teach one. You have to pull one in, if you will. And so we're just making ourselves visible to that there is a way out. We are the gateway out. This is the most important part of your life. There is a way out. Because you have substance abuse here, mental health here, housing here, employment here. And I think they still got to work out how to integrate them all into like a program that you were just talking about. Um, and it, in the district, and you know, Tisa, you can agree or not, but in the district, I think that um, we just treat one aspect component, of it. yes. And then it's kind of like, oh, we don't do that, you got to go here. Somewhere we're else. We're not necessarily integrating them. And so because of the climate in D.C., they're not interested. I'm not saying they're not interested. It's not a top priority to integrate these things in the way they need to so that people won't have to continue to um, fall back into patterns of substance abuse and homelessness. Because we see a lot of people, um, we're also connected to um, PIW, which is the psychiatric hospital here in D.C. And so what we notice is that when people are discharged, they do not have, they're not connected to services in the community. So when, yes, they've been detoxed and they did they 10 days or four days or whatever the amount, but when they come out, they have no support. So even if that's mental health or substance abuse, so it's important for us to get those community partnerships in the hospitals, in the rehab, so that when those persons are discharged, they can go straight into having a support system and they know exactly what services they're going to get and when, when they can get them. Um, and, it's, and like she said, integrated, where we work, we work both aspects of people's diagnosis. And I'm with the Community College Preparatory Academy a Public Charter School in Washington, D.C. We provide an opportunity for adults uh, who didn't claim their GED or their high school diploma to come back to school and build their skills so that they can pass the GED examination. And then if they want to transition to college, we give them an opportunity to do that. We support them in passing the college entrance exam, as well as offer them four national certifications in uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, we have Microsoft Office Word, PowerPoint, Excel Access, Outlook. We have CompTIA A+, an entry-level IT certification. And then we do customer services. Uh, we find that, uh, particularly in our academic area, it's, it, gives op uh, it gives people an opportunity to build their self-confidence in terms of uh, strengthening their knowledge and allows them to go into different career areas. Uh, and we've seen a lot of success at different ages. Our age group is 18 and over, our oldest student is 86, and so we've seen uh, people come back um, from prison, we've seen people who have been out of the academic field for years uh, to come back, 
Um, we've seen people who've had bouts with substance abuses yeah. that have come back and engaged in the academic process and have gotten into a career and they're doing very well. Um, so we believe that we help contribute to uh, distracting people from negative um, activities like substance abuse, like uh, crime, uh, like uh, uh, just being lost. And so uh, we are here today to support um, recovery prevention uh, and um, we, we just want to be a part of the answer. We want to be a part of the solution. Recovery is real. Let me hear you say it. Recovery is real. I don't think they heard you in Capitol Hill. Let's try that again. Recovery is real. Greetings. My name is Sarah Ahern. I hail from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I am also the founder of End the Stigma, Enough is Enough. Before I begin, I would be remiss if I did not mention a great injustice that has been 60 years in the making. The injustice to which I'm speaking is one committed against communities of color who lost their battle with the disease of addiction or mental health because no one cared. There were no vigils, no compassion, and no anti-stigma campaigns. The only way out was jail through a failed war on drugs campaign or death. Even today, in the most progressive state in the union, my home state of Massachusetts, there has been a 200% increase in overdose deaths in the same communities, all while our leaders applaud a reduction. In whom? People like me, not people like Rhonda. We need to do better and it starts with us. So I respectfully request that we hold a moment of silence for all the lives lost. Thank you. So again, my name is Sarah Ahern. I am a woman in long-term dual recovery, which means for me, I'm a woman in recovery from substance use disorder and a woman in recovery from trauma for greater than four years. Openly declaring being in recovery in this society comes with risk and fear. Why you say? I can answer that in one word, stigma. Stigma is defined as a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. In the recovery world, it is defined as a strong lack of disrespect for a person or group of people or a bad opinion of them because they have done something society doesn't approve of. In this moment in time, during the worst addiction and mental health epidemic this nation has ever seen, with over 200 beautiful lives lost daily, including four of my own, this is simply unacceptable and dangerous. Recovery movement leader William White says this about the dangers of stigma. Stigma is an object of shame. Stigma feeds into the forces of isolation and denial that pushes people deeper into the addictive process and farther away from a medical response to addiction and towards what might seem like an easy answer, simply punishing its symptoms. All this adds up to many people who need help are not getting it. Even though we have both the technology to treat addiction and a full range of mutual help networks to support ongoing recovery. Stigma tells me I can't talk openly about my recovery because it makes someone else feel uncomfortable. Stigma tells me I'm not trustworthy. Stigma tells me I'm unemployable. Stigma tells me I won't ever recover. But the biggest impact stigma has and is our choice of language are the words we choose. Words hurt and often do. Terms like junkie, addict, clean, crazy are often used in reference to individuals like me and are not only hurtful, but stigmatizing language is still identified as the biggest barrier for someone struggling to access the vital help they need, which can result in death. This important conversation regarding language is just not a local one, but a national one. And individuals in recovery or recovery advocates have created a movement of millions to lead and further this conversation at all levels to inform, educate, and include everyone in this conversation. Change happens slowly, but with persistence and perseverance, we will create a new norm. In the recovery world, we use person-centered or person-first language. I am not my disease. 
I am a human being with substance use disorder. I am a human being with mental health challenges. Using hurtful language can also negatively impact the way society perceives substance use disorder and mental health and the people impacted by it. But most importantly, it can affect how individuals think about themselves and their own capacity to change. Language can promote stigma. Many of you may not know that I'm a woman of many words, but you need to know that I'm a doer. So now I'm going to request that all of you take a concrete action step with me today to break stigma in an open and transparent way. I would like for all of you to take the anti-stigma pledge, and I'd like to thank the Graken Center in Boston, Massachusetts, and former White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, Michael Bouchelli, for creating this document. You, when I'm finished, you can get your copy to sign over at the, when you signed up, if you're a vendor or volunteer. The pledge states simply, I believe that words I use in talking about substance use disorder are important in reducing stigma. I pledge to treat all people with substance use disorder with dignity and respect. I pledge to talk about addiction as a chronic illness and not a moral failing. I pledge to be a leader in reducing stigma and promoting recovery from this disease. For those in dual recovery like myself or co-occurring disorders, please feel free to add your own terms to the pledge. I am further challenging those that are comfortable to take a selfie of themselves with a pledge and post it to my End the Stigma Enough is Enough Facebook page because to truly break stigma, you must do so in an open, transparent way. With that being said, in my world, we believe in meeting people where they're at, so it's okay if some are not comfortable posting, but please read the words in the pledge and practice using them. And for further reference, please go online and search for the addiction-ary, which is an online resource for more example. And remember, words hurt and try to be helpful and not hurtful with them. So you may be wondering why I've taken the risk to share with you so openly today. It's simple for me, really, so that my light of recovery will shine so brightly that others still in the darkness may find their way out. I leave you with a quote from the film Judgment at Nuremberg by Judge Dan Haywood. There are those in the country today who speak of protection of the country, of survival. The answer is, survival is what? A country isn't a rock. It isn't an extension of oneself. It is what it stands for when standing for something is the most difficult. Before the people of the world, let it be noted in our decision here that this is what we stand for. Justice, truth, and the value of a single human being. I wish to thank Ms. Rhonda Johnson and the rest of the committee for giving me the honor of speaking today and all of you for being here. Be kind to one another. Peace.
Beverages. I, I even do kids' parties. I have a little art shop on Pennsylvania Avenue. It's 650 Pennsylvania Avenue in Southeast Washington, D.C. on Capitol Hill. When I'm painting, I don't know. I just start feeling the vibrations of the music. Sometimes I want wine. Sometimes I don't want wine. I get so lost. Like, I had to bring some spare things. So when I start painting, I'm going to start out. I'm not going to know what in the world I'm doing. But then when I start thinking about things and I start thinking about my past life and just things amongst people, period. I have this series called City Mouth. I don't have any City Mouths with me because they sold. 
City Mouth is definitely a replica of what's going on in the world around here, everything. We are people out here in this city. It's so many things. We just want to take things to escape things. We want to do things to escape things. So I'd rather pick up my paintbrush than to pick up your bag. That's it. That's all. That's it. All right, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed that workout. Okay. We got a singer in the house, y'all. And her name is Lomina B. And Miss B, could you come up here and let heaven know from the sweet sound of your voice. She's also my co-worker. She's been my confidant. She's been my prayer partner. And it would not be, I had to have her. So we're going to hear her beautiful voice. Thank you. Come on and make some noise. That dance team was amazing. Did you all enjoy them? They were amazing. So amazing. And so the song that I'm going to sing, because it's just me, I'm going to sing it a cappella. And if you know it, I need you to just help me sing it today. Are you ready? I need y'all to be the praise team. Okay? How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, you can put your hands together. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Yeah. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of my praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Come on, if you know that, let's sing that part. You're the name above all names. Yes, you are. You are worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Come on, let's take it from the top. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, one more time while we're on this platform right here. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, thank you, how great is our God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are worthy of my praise. Yeah. And my heart will sing how great is our God. One more time. You're the name. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of my praise. God, this is my part right here. Your name. 
and all would see how great, how great is our God. I want to put your hands together for Jesus. I was in Vietnam in 1968, and I came home suffering from combat fatigue, which they call PTSD now, but at that time they didn't call it that. So I was just one of the ones that fell through the cracks because we didn't have a relief at that time. So I engaged myself in many things and ended up in prison. And from there, I started changing, started transitioning through life, and I got with this program called Arm and Arm. It's been very instrumental in here, helping me change my life. We deal with uh, mentally challenged individuals who have been involved in substance abuse and other chemicals and other a aspects of their life that has changed them and make them other than themselves. And we try to help others to be better. And we do cognitive training, dealing with the issues the stress and anxiety of being incarcerated and the results of that. We also are uh, arm in arm registered voters in Virginia, incarcerated returning veterans who have regained their rights back, but we help them with their voting rights and we help them get services under the Constitution of the United States. And uh, we hope to be a, a far reaching program that gets in all segments of society to try to help them challenge the things that they want to challenge. I uh, 
one of the things, one of the key things of our program is sitting down and just talking to each other. You know, we sit down and discuss things, things that we are challenged every day. And we just keep a connection with one another, try to pull each other up and try to deal with the anxiety and depression of a changing world and this changing society. Welcome to the WTP Dance Team. We are a WTP team. We hope you enjoy this performance.
amazing grace. I am 57 years young, not old, and I have definitely lived most of my adult life dealing with my mental health issues, but I am still smiling. Maybe to live out my dream to establish that all-female gospel health band as we perform spreading our motherly melodic harmonic sounds of love and joy with the essence of peace and togetherness throughout our instruments. It's so amazing that I can even hear the notes and lyrics from up above after all that I have gone through. I don't want to hate, fight, or retaliate for what has occurred in my life. I just want to serve as a pure, powerful, and sincere mental health advocate by loving, encouraging, giving good, helpful advice to help someone, anyone, not to give up on their lives. Yes, it is extremely difficult for me to live in this world. No progress in sight. Just that, that same dark hole with no spirit, no concentration, no cleanness. No one could understand my emotions nor pains. I thought there was nothing, only hopelessness embedded in my soul. And I have to tell it, being told those darn, but I used another word, murderous words, just get over it, get a job. And this ignorant one from my former church pastor, stop feeling sorry for yourself. All coming from people that may have never ever lived through what I have, even though they were, they thought they were helping. I'm almost finished. Thank the Lord. Um, okay. The, their voices only made matters worse. Yes, I thought many times of giving up. Lord, I can't make it in this world. I'm not mean enough. The hurt is too powerful. No one is listening to me. I don't even have a purpose. Then I believed at that moment, that second, no less than less than that second, my heart was looked upon by the angels sent from God. I felt those angels fire, light, and love. So as I stand before you with my caring, sharing, person and body as a witness that you can live through those deep dark mental health issues that you, that can cause you suicidal thoughts i am a witness that you can survive suicide because one of my brothers did jump off that bridge one day until death if you would just never ever stop hoping by faith telling the truth Depending on your higher power constantly for help, strength, and as a leaning post, no matter what, then you too will be quoting, it's so amazing, Grace. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm done. All right! Whoa, thank you so much, amazing Grace. Can clap your hands like this. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you, he's able. Come on and clap your hands, and it's alright to sing with me. Oh yeah, he's able, yes he is, yes he is, yeah. what he said he would do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on god cause he won't give up on you he's able oh, 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 oh. he's able he can do it, he's gonna do 
understand and accept that whatever has happened in the past is not your fault. I am a person who is an addict. I suffer with addiction, mental health, and suicide. But that's not my story. It used to be a part of my life. Drugs is not the key. It's not even the answer. All drugs do is keep you in bondage. I'm free now. For the first time, I am free. I can smile. I have a dollar in my pocket. And on top of that, I'm happy with myself. I guess most importantly, you have to learn to love yourself. You can sit up and say, it's that person's fault. Oh, my life is wrong. Okay, in, 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 in some ways, it is their fault. But what do you do differently to make a difference? See, you're going to be held accountable for your life. If you choose to let drugs or alcohol, depression, sex, the video games hinder and, and dictate your life, then that's no one's fault but your own. All I can tell you is, today I am free. And it's nothing like that type of freedom. Yeah, it took a long time to get here, but if you don't start it, then you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to get out of it. So just know, no matter what, there's hope, there's help, and there's treatment out there. Don't give up, no matter what. All of our productions at GCTV are sponsored in part by Bay State Health, providing the care you and your family need when you need it close to home. Visit them online at baystatehealth.org. Greenfield Savings Bank. Visit them at 400 Main Street in Greenfield. Call them at 774-3191 or go online to greenfieldsavings.com. Greenfield Community College, providing access and excellence in higher education in the Pioneer Valley. Visit them at gcc.mass.edu. The Hammond Family. The Hammond Family are longtime supporters of Greenfield Community Television. New Fortune Chinese Restaurant on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. Visit them online at newfortuneMA.com. Call them at 772-0838 and check them out on Facebook. Real Cleaning Services. Cleaning Hampshire and Franklin County since 1972. We don't cut corners, we clean them. Check them out online at realclean.com. Call them at 413-422-1143. People's United Bank, located at 45 Federal Street in Greenfield. You can call them at 774-3713 or visit them online at peoples.com. The Solar Store of Greenfield, replacing fossil fuels and nuclear power one home at a time. Visit them at 23 Fisk Ave. Call them at 413-772-3122 or visit them online at solarstoreofgreenfield.com. Thank you to our sponsors for supporting all of GCTV's productions.